Okay, folks, it's seven o'clock, and that means we're going to start our webinar. Uh, tonight's topic is going to be a discussion on auditing the ISO 9001 2015 management requirements. This topic was born from watching people during witness audits struggle to get through the requirements, and from my own personal struggles to get through the requirements. We all know um, that in the new version of the ISO standard, there's a lot of back and forth. Uh, requirements are kind of littered all over the place for management. We have things in 4.1, we have things in 5, 6, 9 that all relate to management. And so it can be very difficult to pick a way through all these requirements that make sense. As always, hang on here, flipping the chart. How does this relate to the DQS quality policy? Well, we want to do process oriented audits. Part of the reason for these charts is when I was observing people do them, particularly in section four and five, they were kind of going clause by clause through the, the standard. So it didn't make for a very process oriented approach. Um, some of the terminology that was being used was directly from the standard, not that there's anything particularly wrong with that, except to top management or to laymen, Asking somebody what the context of the organization is might not come across so well to a general manager or a president of an organization. They don't necessarily speak ISOEs. We want to focus on the effectiveness of management systems. And of course, auditing the management clauses in an effective manner is really a huge part of that. And we want to be recognized for our competence. Um, developing a way to get through all these myriad of requirements in a systemic manner does demonstrate that competence because you're not going back and forth and re-asking things and um, you know just kind of reiterating the same sort of stuff. So that's why I came about, or that's how it relates to the quality policy, and that's why I wanted to do this topic. The next couple of charts, we're not going to talk at all about ISO. We're going to talk about management. In a typical company, typical meaning kind of medium sized to high uh, employee count, you're going to have multiple tiers of management. You're going to have executive or top management. You're going to have your middle management layer. And then you're going to have non-management folks. Now, in a very small company, you may only have two layers. And in a very large company, you might have six or seven layers. When I was with Northrop Grumman, 125,000 people, I was a manager of a department and I was uh, seven layers down from the CEO. So lots of layers of management in some of these organizations. And that comes into play when you start talking about goals and the flow down of goals. But let's just talk about what management does. Your executive management develop your strategy. So in, they're going to talk about the purpose, what they want the organization to be. They're going to determine the structure. Are we going to be a matrixed organization or not. They're going to develop your strategic goals. They think about business in terms of high level risk and opportunity to the business. They develop resource plans. Another word for a resource plan could be a budget. So they're just determining the capital, they're determining who we're going to hire at a uh, high level, and they communicate those plans and goals down to the next level. The middle layer develops the tactics. Now, sometimes those plans and goals, tactical, will be coming from direct from top to the middle, but sometimes it'll be a strategic goal that the middle layer will translate into a tactical goal. Tactical goals are short-term goals, and they have to do with how we're going to execute in the organization. The middle layer will also concern itself with tactical risks and opportunities. While this top layer is thinking about what are the high-level risks to the business, this middle layer is going to be more in the, to use an AS terminology, since I'm in AS class this week, operational risks and opportunities. The middle layer is going to acquire the resources. They're going to hire the people. They're going to buy the machinery. They're responsible for budget adherence. They don't typically set their own budgets. They're handed down from the top layer. And they communicate up in terms of how they're doing on goals and down in terms on what's expected and information needed to execute the plan. And the bottom layer is the layer that's executing the plan and they communicate up typically to middle management. Little Sun Tzu quote for those of you that are interested, if the um, 
words of the command are not clear and distinct, and if the orders are not thoroughly understood, the general, the executive layer is to blame. If the orders are clear and the soldiers nevertheless disobey, disobey it's the fault of the officers. That's the middle layer. So nowhere in this quote do we have the fault of, of the employees. I find it to be a, a very interesting and probably apropos type of quote. And anyway, think about this. This has nothing to do with ISO. I did map in some things that you're going to understand as to be ISO requirements. But again, we haven't talked about ISO yet. So now moving to the next chart. Still not going to talk about ISO. Just think of yourself in an organization, in a business. What management things happen in a typical business? Well, somebody's defining the structure. We talked about that. Somebody's setting a purpose in a strategic direction. Most businesses had goals long before there was anything called ISO. There was something called management by objective. Businesses are always assessing their risks and opportunities. The standard brought this in in the new revision, but it's nothing new to assess risk and opportunity as a business. The businesses are always providing and balancing resources. Show me a business that doesn't have a business plan or a budget, and I'll show you a super small business or some business that's not necessarily going to be successful. They ensure customer satisfaction. They ensure those goals that they set over here are met. And they ensured that they meet statutory and regulatory requirements. Before there was anything like ISO, we had EPA, we had other things that we had to meet. So we haven't talked at all about ISO, but you could see that businesses were doing a lot of the things that ISO required before ISO put its uh, hand into businesses. ISO did bring us some new things, and they had mostly to do with QMS effectiveness, Establishing a quality policy. People had mission statements and that before, but maybe they didn't have a quality policy combined with objectives in it. Integrating the QMS into business processes, that's new. Promoting a process approach, that was something that wasn't there before. And communicating the importance. So these are newer requirements brought in in the 2015 standard and specific to ISO. So now we're going to make a, a segue back into ISO 9000. And I'm going to give you kind of the approach. And the approach was outlined in that chart where I had the layers of management. And we're going to assume we're talking to a medium or larger size company. Your questioning needs to be appropriate to the level you're speaking with. And I already mentioned in small, very small organizations, seven or eight people there may just be one level a top manager and then you know everybody else is executing in larger larger organizations you have may have multiple levels but the meat and potatoes of what we're doing is those medium-sized organizations so those 200 300 600 people organizations that aren't part of a corporation they're going to have a top management layer and that'll be their presidents and VPs, then they're going to have a minimum management layer, and then they're going to have the executors. When you're asking those questions, they need to be focused on the ISO requirements, but not part using ISOEs for the most part. Now, some things you can talk to top managers about, for example, they're going to understand risks, they're going to understand opportunity. As I just showed you, that has nothing to do or had very little to do with ISO, it existed long before ISO pulled it into its requirements. You're going to have to determine who's responsible for tactical goals, how they're developed and how they're flowed down. And you need to, of course, be respectful of time, top management. And the reason I'm breaking it up like this is because I see people going in, talking to what I'll call the tactical layer, the management rep, middle management, and asking them about business planning and asking them about the purpose of the organization and the establishment of the quality objectives and a lot of that is not done by that layer so you're not going to get a good answer there conversely i see people going in to the top manager or gm at a site that has six seven hundred people and trying to walk through the details of management review well top management may participate in management review and should according to the requirements but they're not the person you're probably going to sit down with and go, show me, you know, how you ad address external suppliers in the management review. You're going to do that with more of a tactical management layer. So what do I ask top management? 
And here's where I'm going to give you a little list of questions to consider. Now, all organizations are different. I'm trying to kind of come up with a generic way of addressing this. I'm going to start with what's your vision for the organization? What do you want your organization to achieve? And that's really a different way of asking what's the purpose of the organization, which would be the ISOE's question. Then I would transition into how do you set long term, three to five year objectives for the business? So now we're talking about um, stuff that's going to appear in clause 41 or 4115 related to leadership. How often do you do it? Who's involved with the process? Does it result in a business plan? That's something that's not called out in ISO, but it's something that represents long term objectives in a business. Is there some other document that has long term objectives? Can I see it? Important questions in this are not just to talk about the concept of a business plan, but to see that document. Now, sometimes corporations are going to say, I'm sorry, that's confidential information. And even though we have a confidentiality agreement with you, we don't want to show it to you. To which you could say, OK, I understand that. But I need to see enough of it to see that this has been done, this activity has been done. And then they can typically, you can work a solution where they can redact it or show you a piece of it that relates to the things you want to see, which might not be and typically aren't the financials, which are the proprietary stuff. Are the goals translated into short-term goals? So here you want to understand, I've got these long-term goals at a strategic level. How do I flow them into something that's tactical? Are you doing it, top management, or are you flowing a strategic goal down and you're expecting the tactical level to do this or the layers in between that are doing it? How do you monitor this? Who's responsible? Are we having meetings? What do you do when the goals are not achieved? These are all questions you can ask to a top manager related to the goals that they establish for their organization, which relate to the vision of the organization. Top management will understand risk and opportunity. That's basically what they get paid for. So you can ask them directly, how do you evaluate the business risks? How do you evaluate the opportunities? What's your plan to overcome them? Have you documented it? Now, uh, I got a question earlier from one of the auditors who said, hey, a lot of clause four doesn't require documentation. Pretty much everything except the scope doesn't require documentation. What do I do if I can't ask for documentation? I didn't say you couldn't ask for it. You can't necessarily require it. If they don't have it, they have to prove that they've done the evaluation, which means they have to talk to you about it. The concept of a themed opinion was introduced in the 2000 version of the standard. Not everything needed a record. Not everything had to be documented. So it's not new to what we're doing as a certification body. Continuing about risks and opportunities, you can ask if they have them documented. You can ask if they have plans to mitigate. Um, you can ask how they evaluate the effectiveness of those plans. That must be documented because if we were to, going to talk about management review, part of that is evaluating the effectiveness of actions taken on risks. So you can ask for documentation there. Top management, they're developing this business plan that has a financial aspect to it. It has a resource as aspect to it. So you say, Mr. Top Manager, that you want to be all these things. How do you plan your resources to achieve all those things? So they should be able to show you that. And those resources could be capital, they could be infrastructure, they could be people. You can ask about changes to the organizational roles and the responsibilities. Remember, top management is setting the structure of the organization. And then you can ask, how do you communicate things to the organization? I always try and ask something along the lines of, I'm going to go out on the floor. I'm going to talk to your middle manager. I'm going to talk to your executors. I'm going to ask them about goals and risks. What do you think I'm going to hear? And how have you communicated it down to them? This is a little flow of questioning, starting with vision, walking through goals, walking through risks, ending with resources and communication that can work effectively with an organization that has a strategic management layer. 
Okay, in most organizations, the goals, the technical goals will be flowed down to the middle management. So right now, I'll use DQS as an example. Brad, Mike are getting goals. They're the top management layer. They're getting goals from Germany, who's really the top management layer. And they're translating those into tactical goals that they're going to flow down to me as a middle manager. And I'm going to flow down to employees in, that work in my organization. And that is a reality of what's happening in our business. In this case, Mike is translating strategic goals into tactical goals that he's going to give me for the 2019 year. So if we were auditing, the organization, we would ask, hey, who's setting these strategic goals? That's top management. And how are they being translated? While well, they're being translated by the VP layer. So you need to find out where in the organization that's happening. When you're talking to this level, a lot of your audit may be done with the management rep. Now, I'm not saying all of it. I'm saying when you're going to talk about seeing how tactical goals are monitored, you're going to talk about management review and the effectiveness of the QMS and that sort of thing, you're probably going to have those discussions more with the middle layer than you are going to have with the top layer. So let's go through some questions for that middle layer. So you got your goals flowed down from top management. How are they set up? Are they by department, process? Both, can you show them to me? Can you show me how you're performing? How often are you reviewing them? Who's reviewing them? And then the money question, what happens when they're not achieved? So now you wanna see actions. All of this is information that you need for the report anyway. But beyond that, more important than the report, you wanna know what's their processes in their QMS so that when they've set their goal and they're not achieving their goal, that they're gonna take action on it and how is it communicated up through the organization. Now you can ask them about risk and opportunity. They're gonna be more at the operational risk and opportunity level. So these are folks that are maybe gonna have risks and opportunities identified by process or by department, however their organization is set up. Do they have a method for doing it? How often are they doing it? How often are they evaluating it? Is there criteria for uh, acting on risk? Not that you can make them do these things. So not every question here is necessarily something that is tied to a firm requirement of the standard. Like there's nowhere in the standard where you're gonna find something that uh, says they have to have criteria to act, uh, define when they're gonna act on risk. You're, you're gonna find words to that effect, but not using the word criteria. A lot of you write OFIs on to this effect because they haven't established criteria because you know it's not a requirement. Can you show me where you document action plans and results? How do you know that the actions are effective? Here you can ask for documentation because it's required in clause 4.3, or I'm sorry, 9.3. How do you communicate the goals throughout the organization? And then you're going to go through management review. That's not a question. You're just going to do it at that level. So now we're going to launch a little poll because it's been a few minutes and I'm going through it very quickly as I normally do. And I don't want anybody to fall asleep. So uh, we're going to manage a uh, launch a poll about risks. Okay, I can see people are answering it. Okay, so most of you have answered at this point, and the answer, the textbook answer, was four. One and two above are true. And so I know a lot of people want to talk about prioritization, but again, you know, it's a 
in terms of criteria for prioritization, you can't really ask for it. It's not a requirement of the standard. I'm going to talk just a second about risk. Typical things you're going to see in terms of risk management techniques. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Flipped around a little too much. You're going to see things like a SWOT analysis. You're going to see these kind of fancy um, quadrant type charts for rating risk based on probability and consequence. You're going to see FEMA-like documents or risk registers. You might see criteria for you know, when they're going to take action on a risk, and you can kind of, maybe it's too small here. The point of this whole discussion is the technique, whatever they use, is really not important. We don't care. What we're looking for is that they've done an evaluation of risk and opportunity and that they've gone through it and either taken action to or initiated action to mitigate or they've accepted the risk. And where actions have been taken, that they have some sort of process to follow up and ensure those actions are effective. That's really all we care about. How it's done, how well it's documented, doesn't matter to us. Now, in some of these examples, these two, the corners here, they're pretty good because they tell you what the risk is and they tell you what they're doing about it over here. Something like a SWOT analysis, for those of you that are familiar with the technique, not as good. Not because it's not good at identifying risks, but because it, in this format, if you're going to use this tool, it doesn't necessarily result in action. So if they're using something like a SWOT analysis and they show you, well, these are my weaknesses, which represent my risks. These are my threats that represent my risks. Then you're going to say to them, well, which ones did you take action on? And can you show me that? And then how do you know that this action was effective? So be careful with SWOT analysis. And if they're showing you this as part of management review, they're not really meeting the requirement because, again, the requirement is about the effectiveness of actions taken to reduce risk. So we're getting through this. And now is the true test and the thing that we really need to focus on when we're doing the audit. So you've gone, you've done management at the beginning of the audit. Most of you seem to do that. Nothing wrong with that. And now you're going to go do the audit. Is what you're seeing while you're doing the audit equaling what you heard when you talked to management? So we got eyes. You see the all seeing eye there. They tell us, management is telling us what they expect and what they perceive. But you're going to go do the audit. Do you see that resources are adequate? If we have quality problems, if we have delivery problems, are they related to resources? Do you have large backlogs? You know, we, get, we have all these gauges that are late for calibration. We have a bunch of cars that are late. Audits aren't being conducted on time. Those could be indicators of a resource problem. I always look for single point failures. So I was at a company a couple of weeks ago. They had one blanking press. Every product that they made needed something that was blanked on that press. So I asked them, okay, I'm looking at your process. I see you have one blanking press, six mills, 15 robots that do lapping. Have you identified this blanking press as a risk? And it's a discussion point. I can't make them do it necessarily, but I can certainly ask them because it's, you know, I see it as a risk to the process. If the blanking press goes down, what are you going to do? You can't make product anymore. Are people aware of the goals and objectives of the quality policy? Is that communication effective? These are things that as we're walking through, after they've told us what they expect, we're going to go and see whether what they told us is really in effect what's happening. Okay, you guys have been a, a quiet audience. Um, the summary, we start with top management in this approach. We get the vision for the organization. We get the long-term goals. We try and understand high-level resourcing. We try and understand risks and opportunities. We move to the middle. 
where we expect to see things more operational, tactics, short-term goals, goals related to processes, risk and opportunity related to processes. And as we audit the executing arm, we keep in mind what we learned up here in the top management and middle management layer, make sure what these folks told us is in fact aligning with what we're seeing when we're out on the floor. So I wanted to offer this to you as an approach. I'm not going to guarantee it will work in every case. Each organization is different, but I am gonna say that I've tried it a few times now and it seems to be able to get me through most of the requirements of four, five, six, and part of nine without having to do lots and lots of backtracking and with making sure that when I'm addressing questions to the organization and getting the right question into the right level. And so with that, I'm going to open it up for questions and see if anybody has anything they wanna share or ask. Okay, so we got a question. We see if we see a resource issue, can we hang on a second? I gotta make this a little bit bigger. Sorry, guys. If we see a resource issue, can we issue an AR due to lack of resources? In the past, we stayed away from this. Is it appeared that we were consulting? And so the answer is you certainly can issue and action requests if you see a resource issue. The resources is part of the standard. It's mentioned several places in the standard. So if you're sure that what you got is actually a resource issue, you can go ahead and issue an action request. Let's see if we have any more questions. Any other questions? If you have them, you can type them in in the, the question box. Okay, folks. Well, hearing no other questions, I'm going to stop the presentation at this point. Um, you will receive CPD from this, so um, it'll take me probably a little bit longer than usual to make the certificate since I'm in training this week. Um, and so you'll get the CPD for it. If you have uh, a topic you would like a presentation on, I'm always looking for the next topic. So um, please feel free to share that. And with that, I thank you all for your attendance. This is the largest webinar we've had since we've been having these. And uh, I hope you all have a good night. Talk to you later. Bye.